Hello everyone. Welcome to Sermon on the Go. Today my theme is on the healing of the paralyzed man in Mark chapter 2. I'm going to read for you a few verses from Mark chapter 2. Then we will go into our message for today. Mark chapter 2, reading from verses 1. When he had returned to Capernaum, after some days, it was reported that he was at home. So many gathered around him that there was no longer room for them, not even in the front door. And he was speaking the word to them. Then some people came, bringing to him a paralyzed man, carried by four men. And when they could not bring him to Jesus, because of the crowd, they removed the roof above him. And after having dug through it, they let down the mat on which the paralyzed lay. When Jesus saw their faith, he said to the paralytic man, Son, your sins are forgiven. Now, some of the scribes were sitting there, questioning in their hearts, Why does this fellow speak in this way? It is blasphemy. Who can forgive sins but God alone? At once, Jesus perceived in his spirit that they were discussing these questions among themselves and he said to them why do you raise such questions in your heart which is easier to say to the paralytic your sins are forgiven or to say stand up and take your mat and walk but so that you may know that the son of man has authority on earth to forgive sins he said to the paralytic I say to you, stand up, take your mat, and go to your home. And he stood up and immediately took the mat and went before all of them, so that they were all amazed and glorified God, saying, We have never seen anything like this. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Friends, there are four groups of people in this narrative. One, Jesus and his disciples. Two, the crowd. Three, the paralytic man and his friends. Four, the scribes and the teachers of the law. Each group have their functionality. So let's look at them closely. Jesus and his disciples. Jesus returns to Capernaum. He entered the city privately, but his popularity had become so great that the multitude rushed to hear him speak. Jesus sat and he preached the word unto them with the crowd gathered around him. Let's consider the role of the crowd. The crowd made it impossible to bring the paralyzed man close to Jesus. To illustrate, there are successful churches and busy Christians who can be obvious to the people in need who want to see or assess Jesus. But in some churches, if the crowd is too thick and they are not interested in people who wants to turn their lives to Jesus. These people may simply wander off and wander away. Isn't it sad when people in churches are so preoccupied with their own relationships and agendas that they fail to recognize those who wants to give their life to Jesus? Of course, this was what was going on in the narrative I read earlier. The crowd was so thick and was not interested in people. As a result, the paralyzed man was not able to assess Jesus 
and they have to go through the unconventional way to assess Jesus. This should never happen in our churches. When people come to church or meet Christians, they should see the love of God reflected in our faces and in our lifestyle and our hands extended to greet them and make it possible for them to assess and meet Jesus Christ. Let's consider the paralyzed man and his friends. The needs of the paralyzed man moved his friends to action and they brought him to Jesus in the unconventional way. When you notice someone in need, do their need move you to action? Do you do something about it? Many people have physical or spiritual needs. We must do our best to help them, either by ourselves or with others who are concerned. These four men were deeply concerned about their friend's need. They had the faith to believe that Jesus could help him and meet his need. These friends did not simply pray about the issue, but they put their feet into their prayers. And they did not permit the difficult circumstances to discourage them. They worked together and dared to do something different. And Jesus rewarded their efforts. Human need moved those four men to action we should learn to follow in their examples and to be compassionate in our actions towards those in need. Let's consider the scribes, also known as the teachers of the law. The teachers of the religious law were in perfect position, sitting where they could observe and criticize Jesus. As soon as Jesus spoke to the paralyzed man, these scribes began to criticize and murmur in their hearts. And Jesus knew that. An example of this is that there are a lot of Christian believers who sit in our churches up and down the country who are exactly the same as the scribes and the teachers of the law. When they come to church, this is how those Christian believers think. Is the music at church too fast or too low? <laughs> Is the sermon too long or too short? Do people irritate or annoy you by sitting in your place in church or by dressing too casually to church? How much time do you spend in church worshipping God? And how much time do you spend in church complaining and criticizing the church and her leaders? We are called as disciples of Christ to work on activism, the kind that involves other Christian believers, to work on real progress, on common objectives, to share the good news of the kingdom of God and to introduce people to Jesus. We are called to help the needy and to build a strong and caring disciples of Christ. The question is, are you criticizing the church and her leaders or are you changing the world by proclaiming the good news of the kingdom of God? This narrative is a great example of how God can work through the faith and determination of one person or a group of people to bring healing and spiritual salvation to a nation, to a community, to a family, and to people. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this message. And we thank you for the healing of the paralyzed man. And so, Father, 
I bring before you anyone under the sound of my voice who is paralyzed in any way, shape or form that you bring healing to their paralyzed body. I pray for total healing for those who are paralyzed, body, mind and spirit. And so, Father, I bring before you Christian disciples. I pray that we will be true disciples and work to share the good news of the kingdom of God and to introduce people to Jesus, to the glory of your name. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Friends, don't forget to subscribe, share this message, and follow me on YouTube. I shall see you on Thursday. Shalom. Peace. <laughs>